I got caught in a lie. It was one heck of a day. It started with news about my mom's cancer. And then I forgot I needed to meet my husband at a storage unit where we were keeping some furniture. So I rushed over there, and as I got there, I got hit like a ton of bricks with my grief. And I began sobbing. And I don't like to cry. And I definitely don't like anyone to see me cry. And here I am falling apart. I look up, and I see my husband walking towards the car, and my body instantly gets tense, panicked, and annoyed. He opens the car door, and I look at him, and I say, go, just go, give me two minutes. Confused, he obliged and walked away. A few minutes passed, and he tapped on the car window and asked if he could get in the car. We drove home in complete silence. I had created such a wall of isolation between the two of us because I could not connect to my husband of 18 years around my grief and sorrow. I had just isolated the one person on this planet that loves me the most and I should have the deepest connection to. As if kicking my husband out of the car was not bad enough, I then lied to my 11-year-old daughter. I went to go pick her up at an after-school activity, and the moment she got in the car, she looked at me and said, Mom, what's wrong? I said, nothing, honey, I am fine. Right? She said, no, you're not, you're lying. You've been crying. Just tell me. I said, really, Cora, I'm just tired. Later that evening, I painfully thought to myself, why am I strong-arming my husband and lying to my daughter? What is wrong with me? The irony is, I'm a licensed therapist. <laughs> I love it. So I lead retreats for women all over the world. I'm a life coach. I've helped hundreds of people with connection. And here I am, struggling with connection. This incident made me realize that connection is a complex issue, and it is not easy. And for someone who thought she had it all figured out, I had so much more to learn. So I became passionate about this exploration because I also know there is so much at stake around human connection. Since 1999, the suicide rate is up 33%. Teen suicide? is up 70%, seven zero. Loneliness is a greater detriment to our health than smoking, obesity, and high blood pressure. Depression is one of the leading causes of disability worldwide. In 1985, one in 10 people said they had no one intimate to talk to, and now it is one in four. And science and the data is telling us that human connection can help solve a lot of these issues. Our brains are wired to reach out and interact. The reward centers light up when we have connection. So when you can interact intimately and honestly with your friends and your family and your community, you strengthen your immune system, you recover from disease faster, and you actually live longer. And human connection absolutely lowers our rates of anxiety, depression, and suicide ideation. We all need to strengthen our connection muscle. But how do we do this? Well, for me, it came down to the basics of being a human being. It revolves around three things, giving space, to all of our feelings, telling the truth, and realizing we are not alone. When I isolated my husband and lied to my daughter, I knew I needed to figure out why I was so afraid of connection. I knew I needed to make a conscious effort to slow down my fast-paced life of work and kids and obligations. I had to get out of my head and into my heart to figure out what I was feeling that day in the car. 
So I began giving space to my feelings by walking in the woods with my dog. And it was there that I realized when I am anxious, <laughs> I need to stop and breathe and get grounded and connect to the body because I need to connect to myself first before I can connect to anybody else. Or if I'm feeling insecure or unworthy, I need to remember at the core of who I am is enough. And I want all of you to remember at the core of who you are, no matter when, is enough. By giving my feelings space, I realized a very valuable lesson about human connection, and it is this. When we can love and connect all of our emotions, our successes and our failures, our joys and our sufferings, we can love and connect others. After I started giving space to my feelings, I knew I needed to start telling the truth. And I started with my daughter. I called her down and I said, you caught me in a lie. You were right. That day in the car, I was sad and I had been crying. She all of a sudden starts looking at me and starts pumping her fist. Yes, I knew I was right. She was so proud of herself. I knew I caught you crying. I knew you were sad. Her reaction made us both start laughing so hard that we connected to each other on such a deeper level than me hiding my truth from my daughter. Can you imagine how the reward centers in our brains were lighting up in that moment? My 11-year-old daughter's authenticity taught me so much about the power of human connection. Lastly, we need to remember that we are wired to connect. It is in our DNA. Human connection is here to give love and comfort where there is pain and isolation. We are not alone. We are all interconnected. And after my storage unit meltdown and my renewed passion to strengthen my connection muscle, I knew I needed to start practicing what I've been preaching for years. So I began having a two-way dialogue with people at coffee shops and grocery stores and my kids' events around one question, and it is this. When do you feel connected? One of my 11-year-old daughter's friends said to me on the way to school, you know when I feel connected? It's when I'm with someone and we don't even have to speak because we're so deeply connected in the heart. Her comment was so raw and real. The moment I looked at her, we were instantly connected. Another brave soul said to me, I know when I'm not connecting, and that is when I am gossiping. And she said, I gossip when I'm dying for connection, but I'm feeling too insecure. So I end up talking about someone else because I can't talk about myself. Guilty as charged. I know I gossip too when I'm dying for anything, to feel alive, to be seen or heard or validated for who I am, I'm sure we've all gossiped for connection. So let's just imagine the positive ripple effect if we all strengthened our connection muscle. If we left here today and made a promise to ourselves to give space to all of our feelings, not just the comfortable ones, the uncomfortable ones too. And we started telling our truth and not saying, I'm fine or I'm great. And we really realized that we are not alone. Even in your darkest moments, when you feel like you may be a burden or no one wants to be with you, you are not alone. The takeaway for me has been the transformation when I actually have the courage to have a heart-to-heart -heart connection. And knowing what I know now, I can role play the scene at the storage unit that feels so much better. I'm sitting in my car, and I get hit with my grief. And I look up, and I see my husband walking towards me. And I'm still scared, even to this day right? But I'm a lot calmer. And he opens the car door, and I say to him, 
please come in. I need you. Thank you very much.